You will not see wind. You will not hear storm. You will not hear cloud gather. But your ditches will be filled with water. There will be more than enough supply for your household and for enough to make you a blessing. If you receive it, lift your hands and say, I receive this one. And he entered into one of the ships which was Simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Simon answering and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. Hmm. And they came and filled both the ships so that they Two ships could not handle the supply of the day. This scripture or this story narrates uh, something deep, more than just the little things that happen, because it portrays uh, one of the attributes of God. Our God is El Shaddai. That's uh, what he says he is. Or that's who he says he is. It means that he is the Almighty One. Now, being Almighty is is a very powerful thing. It simply means that there's nothing He cannot do. Nothing, nothing is off limits for Him. You cannot say, "Oh, he, can God do this one?" Because what just happened here is a demonstration of the Almightiness of God. You are familiar with the story. It's a lake. The body of water that they are fishing is a lake. River Benue is better than it. Because a lake is a body of water surrounded by land. A river is much better because it's connected to other rivers. If Benue begins to suffer, Niger can suffice. Add something. If Niger begins to have issue, Nile can add something. Because there's a connection. But a lake is like a swimming pool. If it dries, it dries. And then the fishers came to the lake throughout the whole night. They toiled, they labored, they, they, they invested their time, their skill, their energy, their wisdom for a whole night. I don't think that it's such a massive lake that they couldn't have combed it through. And that's the reason why Peter was very mindful, even though he honored Jesus, he was, he was careful to let him know, Master, we have, it's a lake, we are done. It's, this is a deal. It's like you have a, a fish pond. And then harvest time came, and you came and harvested your fish. That was what happened. Through their activities on the lake, they have exhausted the immediate possibility of the lake. But God showed his almightiness that he is the creator of all the fishes in the ocean. Because it will, it will take a miracle. The reason why, if you read the next verse, I didn't read. Peter suddenly felt the holiness of God. That was when he looked upon himself and he said, depart from me, I'm a sinner. Because what just happened, it, it had to be, it had to be God. Peter was an experienced fisher. So it had to be God. We covered the water. And then suddenly, Jesus showed and said, go again. And they did again. And from the same water that they finished, the Bible said the catch they had. I don't know if they've ever had such a catch before. I doubt it that much. The catch was so sufficient that the Bible said, Peter's boat couldn't handle. His partner's boat also could not handle. Because the Bible said when they filled the two ship with fishes, the boats began to sink. Which means they couldn't handle it. 
It was way more than their capacity. Only El Shaddai can do such a thing. Because there's only one explanation to what has happened. You see that by the words of Jesus, he created new sets of fishes supernaturally and dumped them there instantly in the realm of the spirit. All the little tadpoles that were left or fingerlings that were left suddenly grew at the instance of his word. Any which way, the catch was a miraculous catch. It was divine. It was supernatural. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? It's a demonstration of the almightiness of God. Show me another that can give such a result. Show me another that can, can bring forth this kind of, of accomplishment. This is another manifestation that it is the almighty at work. So we're talking about something divine here. Yeah. We're talking about something supernatural here. We're talking about an activity that is of the supernatural kind. That is the type I'm believing God for you this month. That before this month is over, even in your physical resources, you will see the difference that the hand of Yahweh can make. For those who do not believe, I don't care. It will still happen for you. You are implicated by association. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? The God who will visit the rest of you will visit you by force. He will make this work for you by force. He will touch your business by force. Let me hear that your amen like thunder. Peter got the kind of supply that made him felt like a sinful man. He felt undeserving. I don't deserve this. This is too much. That was when he began to talk about his, his spiritual condition. It was such a supernatural provision. This is supernatural supply. The men had surrendered. They were willing to go back home that day, even if it is empty-handed, to go and explain to their family. Today was not a good day. There's no show today. But God showed up and showed himself strong. Our God, Abraham, identified him also as Jairah, one that provides. This is provision here. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? They were to go home empty-handed, but Jesus changed the story. They didn't go empty-handed anymore. They would not just have enough to feed their family for that day. They had enough to last them for a longer period of time. That is what is called a breakthrough. That is a miracle. That is a kind of provision that God is going to connect you to. It will not just be enough to sustain you for a little while. It will also make you a blessing to other people for a long time. I am prophesying you are not receiving it because you are reading news and seeing, and seeing all of the things going on in the nation. It will, whether it's going on well or not going on well, it will be well with you. Your family will not beg for food. Oh. I want to connect you to an economy higher than the economy of Nigeria. Nigeria is a $500 billion economy. I want to connect you to trillion, zillion, billion, I don't know what to call it, to economy. The economy that cannot fail is inexhaustible. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? And you are not saying amen. Where help will come for you this morning, you will not even know. Oh, I say we are help. We come for you this month. You will not even know how that bill will be paid. You will not know. Hallelujah. You will not see wind. You will not hear storm. You will not hear cloud gather. But your ditches will be filled with water. There will be more than enough supply. For your household and for an, enough to make you a blessing. If you receive it, lift your hand and say, I receive this one. Hey, I receive this one too. Me too, I receive this one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you check through the scripture, God exerts this type of dominion over creation from time to time. From time to time. It's consistent with his character. It's consistent with his nature. It's consistent with his capacity that he can provide without explanation. Without explanation, he can provide. He can do and undo. That's why he's the only one you can call El Shaddai. This is a demonstration of the greatness of God in providing for his people. Paul the apostle, Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, but my God 
shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. How many of your needs? In this dimension, I'm talking about how many of your needs can be met? All. You must convince yourself that God is that able. You must convince yourself that God is that capable. You must convince your, oh, you, you, you don't want to convince yourself, right? Peter was shocked. But this is one of the demonstration of supernatural supplies. And with it comes some understanding. And that is what I want to communicate as we introduce the month of supernatural supply. There are three understandings I, want, I got from this whole episode of supernatural supply. By way of definition, let us call supernatural supplies divine provisions for today. Let us call it divine provisions. It's provision, all right, but it has a divine element to it. Meaning it is not earthbound. It has the hand, the capacity, the signature of the divine within it. That's what supernatural supply is. It is divine provision. Divine provision. That's the only explanation to what transpires here. But quickly, what is this supernatural supply? The three understanding I got from this scripture, number one. Divine supplies is provision beyond human skills and abilities. It is provision beyond human skills and abilities. Now within skills and abilities, we're going to put all your qualification. We're going to put all the job you can do plus the extra jobs you can do in the name of side hustles. We're going to put all of your learning, your skills within that. On top of all of that, supernatural supplies is provision beyond all of those. Provision beyond your job, your career. Provision beyond your earning in your businesses. Provision beyond your earning from all your side hustles put together. This provision was more than Peter is a good fisherman. I hope you, you saw that there. As a good fisherman, it earned nothing on that day. But when supernatural provision took over, it overtook the skill of Peter. What the skill of Peter could not deliver, supernatural supplies delivered. What your job has not been able to deliver to you is what supernatural supply comes to cover. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? What all of your labors and efforts and you know th those investments you have made here and there has not been able to deliver. That is what supernatural supply comes to deliver. So number one, Supernatural supplies is provision beyond your skill and abilities. So what we're talking about is more than I work in NMPC. What we're talking about is more than I have a big shop in town. It is when all of that put together still does not deliver, but God comes through over and above that. And still delivers. Do you know God can meet your need beyond your salaries? Now for those who don't earn anything. That tells you that if God can meet your need beyond salary. It means that if you don't even have a salary. God can still meet your needs. Oh they don't even believe me. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? That is what is called supernatural supplies. When it exceeds all your skill. And your abilities. And if you don't get to that place. You are living with the limits of the earth. And we are not supposed to live like that. If you live within the limits of the earth, you can't be a blessing. And in this covenant, you are supposed to be a blessing. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah? NLC is, is striking today and we don't know for how long they will strike. And their biggest call 
is for two is for the minimum wage to become two hundred thousand naira. Is, is that not what they're saying? Now that's 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 good. That's okay. I think that's not too bad. Amen. But the truth of the matter is, even when we go to minimum wage of two hundred thousand naira, it, there will still be needs that are beyond the two hundred thousand. I was telling mommy, if you went, this whole thing began to work. I said, we, have, we are in a dilemma as a nation. We are in a dilemma. We are in a dilemma because real growth, we are not yet seeing in our economy, in our country. We are not yet seeing real growth. I'm talking about economic growth. Okay? Because almost all the sectors are not performing optimally. Even, even the so-called oil sector that is like our main... Um, the main contributor to our GDP is not even yielding optimally. It's rift with all manner of corruption on the performance. I don't want, let me not go too far on that. But that by itself is not even where it's supposed to be yet. We're still talking about stolen crude oil. We're still talking about, I, I read a few days ago, NMPC said that they, they have discovered how many, over 160 something Illegal pipelines. <laughs> oh, Nigeria is sweet. Illegal pipelines. Who connected it? From where did they connect it? How did they connect it? From one two hundred sixty something. Hey. <laughs> if you don't fear Nigeria, I fear you. Nigeria is a wonderful country. Ocean liners disappear in Nigeria. Sheep can disappear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're in Nigeria, you have to believe God. Miracles happen every day in Nigeria. Pipelines that are taking crude oil. So even the oil sector is not even working, right? At least optimally. Thank God for the other sectors contributing, maybe 25% or something. I hear agri is contributing over 20% now. Even in agriculture, we are not even at commercial. We are still at subsistence. We are just trying to feed ourselves. And we are not even meeting up with feeding ourselves. We are not even meeting up with it. I can give you statistics that we are not even meeting up. Bulk of the things we consume are imported till today of course we have one of the most arable lands in Africa in large in thousands thousands of hectares an acreage of land that are not being deployed at all so basically our economy is not is not that buoyant now this is what happened the, recently there's been some adjustments that's happened in government the floating of the Naira the first subsidy removal so when all this happened, I was explaining to mommy, I said, look at the implication of what just happened now. Now, what will happen is that federal government or the government is going to get more cash available. There will be more cash. They will come into, for instance, it's a very simple mathematics to do. Before now, we have different windows for the dollars, right? CBN was given for 400, like that. They have all manner of windows. Now, the new administration came and harmonized everything. So dollar went to sometimes um, 800 naira, 850 to, uh, to, to, to one dollar, right? Now, when we're doing 400 at the CBN window for all of those things, crude oil and all of those imports and all that business that was going on, it means that when we end one million dollar from any of those transactions, we got 400 million naira. Am I correct? Something like that. Yes, now. So why they look me like that? Like as if I, I miss the mass. Now, what happened with the floating of the naira and the removal of first subsidy is that at that moment, if we made one million dollar from a transaction, we made eight hundred million. So that means money just multiplied in the economy, not because the economy practically grew. That's why if you notice, in June and July, 
the federal allocation whatever committee, the FAC, the way they go to share money for the, for the federating units, the states and the local government, suddenly money moved. In fact, last month, I think they shared almost one trillion. Almost one trillion. That's, that's the implication of what just happened. Because our dollar that was 400 naira is now 800. Every one million dollar give us 800 million. So every one billion dollar give us 800 billion naira. So technically speaking, you are going to be hearing federal government and state government and local government sharing more and more money. We will hit one trillion by the end of this month in sharing. So that means there will be more money in the economy. The problem with that is this. <laughs> when you have money and you don't produce anything, you will import everything. The other name for it is called inflation. So, more money does not necessarily translate into more prosperity unless you produce more of the things you use that money for. If not, somebody else will get the money as you are grabbing the money. So it will be like plus one, minus one. Nothing much will change, but there will be more. Even if they agree to pay the 200,000 naira as minimum wage, it has not translated to prosperity yet. So I was telling mommy, I said, this is how to survive the economy of Nigeria now. If you want to survive in this economy, even the governments, this is the only strategy. You must double up your earning power. If not, you will still not keep up. If they move minimum wage on 30 to 200. Unless you have multiple earnings, you will still not keep up. Because when they hear that your salary of 30,000 became 200,000, brothers and sisters, the principal of your children's school had it too. You are not the only one that heard it. <laughs> so everything will rise at the same time. This is how currencies of nations die. This is how it dies. Okay, when the nation is not really growing, but they are getting more money. Eventually to amount to they are printing more money to meet up with the imbalances. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you want to have a little life in such a, a, a situation, you must double up your earning power. That is to say, one stream of income will not be sufficient to survive Nigeria in the next few months. You need more than one stream of income. Solution may be, maybe from the last speech of the president, if they follow through, the amount of farming they want to do, all the other endeavors we want to do, if they follow through, we may become a prosperous nation. But if they don't, and it's just political cheap talk. Today, the money of Sierra Leone has no value. They have plenty of it. What I'm saying is this. If only in this world you have hope, you may be disappointed. What I'm saying is this. If only in the systems of this world, you tie your prosperity, you tie the supplies that meet your need, you are mistaken. We must intentionally begin to leverage on supernatural divine interventions because God can do it. He has done it before. He will continue to do it for those who will believe that he can do it. That's why you need, to, you need to open your mind for divine ideas to flow in this time. Concepts, innovations. Because those are part of the ways that God provides for his people. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Those are part of the ways. You must open your mind to relationship, knowledge, things that, that can add value to your life. Those are part of the vehicles that God used to deliver his hand in our lives. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? So we're in a serious situation. If there's ever a time that the church needs to believe God for the supernatural of God 
in all of our affairs, in the way our needs are met. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? It is now. We must believe God like that. I didn't tell you all this to depress you. I told you all this to give you hope that we can survive this thing. We can. We can. <laughs> and we will. Our fathers did. Abraham did. Isaac did. We shall. In fact, if there's ever a time we're going to shine more than ever before, it will be now. God is going to work some mathematics that will not have any human explanation and connect us to things that we have no explanation for. Did you hear what I just said? So please, there is provision beyond your job. That's what this point is telling you. There is provision beyond your business. Don't let your business shaking in the business, instability in the economy, don't let it make you lose faith. I'm telling you, there's something beyond there. It is called supernatural provision. Provision beyond all of those things. Provision beyond all of those things. Provision beyond there. That is supernatural provision. Number two, supernatural provision is provision beyond your efforts and labors. There is provision beyond your efforts and labors. I believe in labor, hard work. I believe in it. I believe in it. I don't like laziness, indiscipline. I hate it with passion. So I'm not going to preach you out of hard work, commitment, dedication. I will always preach you into it. But child of God, there's provision beyond all of your efforts put together. There's provision beyond there. God can move beyond the work you have done, the work you can do, and the ones you may want to do. He can move beyond it. He can move beyond it. And we should expect him to move beyond it. We should expect him to move beyond all of our efforts. Your efforts are good. Keep putting your efforts. But expect more than the result of your efforts. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Be committed at your work. Deliver on the targets. But expect supplies beyond there. Beyond there. Expect supplies beyond there. Beyond there. Your job will pay you. Your job will keep paying you. But expect supply beyond there. Expect supply beyond all the efforts you have made. At trying to make your business to stand. At trying to keep your, 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 your finance to keep flowing. Expect beyond there. Supernatural supply is when God supply beyond your efforts. I pray that somebody will experience God in this dimension. Where God will supply beyond your efforts. Oh, I've heard story of people before who were saving money for a particular project. I, had, I, 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 you know, I know of a guy that was saving money for a car. He was saving, saving, saving. It took so long, but he, worked, he kept trying his best. Situations would come, de deplete the money. Then he would start again and kept going. At the end, when it was almost looking like he was going to reach his goal, that was when somebody gifted him, gifted him a car. Hallelujah. How many, of, how many of you like that one? Did he labor? Did he make efforts? Yes, he did. But provision came beyond his labor. That's what I'm telling you. It's called supernatural supplies. When God provides beyond your labor, beyond your labor, labor but expect something beyond there. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. <laughs> One guy told me, he says, sir, he, he, was, he, he was here, he was transferred to another place uh, at his work in another location. So when we met one of the times, he says, sir, I just want to thank God. He said, what God has helped me to accomplish within this period that I left for my new place of assignment is amazing to me. And then he mentioned a few things. Uh, I don't think I want to mention those things, but they are serious accomplishments, serious achievements. What people will call a lifetime achievement, he achieved in months. And then, while she was talking, he now told me, he said, 
when I resumed at my new place, there were opportunities for other things apart from my job, my main job. Okay, he's a professional at certain uh, disciplines, so he said he was getting jobs, like contract jobs. And those contract jobs were sufficient for him to do the things he was telling me about. So his salary was not even in the equation. I hear what I'm saying. Is he earning salary? Yes. But did he achieve the things he achieved by his salaries? No. No. A thousand times no. In fact, the things he achieved, when he was telling me, the things he had done within that period, what I'm talking about is months. The things he had done within that period, if he were to save, let's say, 50% of his salary, he probably would not have accomplished that in five years. Probably. Five years. But he did it in months. God opened channels. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is supernatural supplies. It is provision beyond your efforts, beyond your labors. There's somebody under the sound of my voice. That God is going to open doors that will give you provision beyond your efforts. 